Welcome back to this undersea map making adventure. This is the episode where we're just going to pile on the hacks. We're going to do a vignette hack. We're going to do a reflection hack or two. We're going to do a shading hack. And it's going to be great. Now we're going to do some tricks to help visually draw the eye to the center of the composition and make it look nice and watery. I'll insert a rectangle graphic covering the entire layout. And in the properties of this rectangle, I'll choose the symbol. Once again, I can style it just like it's a polygon. I'll turn off this outline. And instead of a solid fill, I'll choose a gradient fill. Show you what that looks like. I'm going to change it from buffered to circular and from discrete to continuous. Nice, smooth, continuous transition. And the color stops, I'll set the same as my water effect. I've got a dark navy here, and I've got this bright green here. Now, I'm not stuck with these two color chips. I can really work specifically with this by expanding this drop list and choosing color scheme properties. In this case, I'll make this 20% transparent, and then it'll transition to 100% transparency. Now this is a pretty abrupt gradient. I want to push it away from the edge a little, so I'll insert a color stop and drag it way over here. I'll select my end color again and soften this even more. I'll add another color stop, drag it over there to about halfway across my view. Okay, okay. And I want my size to fill the minimum width of my rectangle. Now I've got something that looks very water world. How do I make sure that my overview globe isn't encapsulated in this watery world? I'll choose that extent rectangle I drew and my overview, and I'll just drag them to the top of the drawing order. And I'm actually okay with the fact that this north arrow looks like it's slightly underwater. That's cool to me. Now I'm going to turn this up to 11 and just draw a big reflection here to make this look like we're looking at a shiny, watery, spherical surface. So I'll inter insert, instead of a rectangle, a circle and draw a great big circle. I'll open its properties and once more I'm going to choose no stroke and a gradient fill. Circular, continuous, going from white to a fully transparent white. And this is quite harsh. I'll tone this distance down, let's say 65, so I don't have an edge artifact where it ends. Now let's tweak this a little bit. And just like with my vignette, I'm going to soften this. I'll insert a color stop and push it a little bit closer. And insert another color stop and put it a little bit closer. So I have more of a fall off distance before it gets nice and bright. And I'll hit OK. And I can just resize this to taste. And now we've got an area of the map where perhaps I could put a title and some text descriptions that's benefiting from the fact that this is more washed out. But I'm also implying a spherical perspective. Let's do something similar for our overview globe. I'll just hit Control C and Control V to copy and paste that rectangle graphic, or that circle graphic rather, and I'll resize it. to something suitable for my overview map. And I'll position it near the top left area, like it's a 3D object. Already we're looking at something that's more tangible and more real, which is fun. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to duplicate this again, Control C, Control V. And this time I'm going to put it on the opposite side and I'm going to drag its draw order to be beneath the overview. I'll change these colors instead of white, I'll set them to black. And it's important that I change this from semi-transparent white to transparent black so I don't get muddy gray tones. And now when we zoom out, we see an overview that appears to be sitting atop our map extent. I will see you over at part four where we're going to work on 3D looking labels and some trippy graticule lines.